Good morning. Good morning. We are in Igeres Akedesh, Igeres Dalad, in the middle of Igeres Dalad, on page 210 towards the bottom. Just to give a quick recap. Just to give a quick recap here. So the Alter Rebbe begins with a Gemara that says that Tzedakah is what will bring about redemption. As in the Pasuk, which means her captives or those who are returning will be with Tzedakah. And he leaves it at that and he's going to come back to that Pasuk later on in the chapter, in the letter. Then he comes and asks a question on a different Pasuk. Tzedek, the fun of Yahalech. The Tzedek, righteousness, shall go before him, but it should have said Yelech. It's a grammatical thing. Yehalech means to imply that it'll cause something else to go, while Yelech means it will itself go. So is the meaning of the, the, the Pasuk, what it seems the simple Pshat is Tzedek Lofanov, Yehalech, that Tzedek will go before a person. A person does Tzedek, then that will go ahead of him. What's Yehalech? As if it will mean it will cause something else to... Uh, to go. That's the question he asks right there, <clears throat> right there at the end of the of the second and, and beginning of the third line. So he goes, so he gets into the topic by bringing us a pasuk from Ledovid Hashem Eri. The pasuk of Ledovid Hashem Eri says, Lecho Omar Libi, Bakshu Ponai is Panecha Avakesh. That to you, my heart. Says Bakshu Panai, search for my Panai, for the Abish's Panai. Different commentaries explain that either it's my heart saying to search for God, or God is saying to me that I should search for, through my heart, with my heart to Him. But the point what he's telling us over here is that the Alter Rebbe says over here is that the heart is Pnimi Salev. And here he goes into a discussion of the different two different levels of the heart. And he introduced us to the idea that there's Pnimi Salev and there's Chitzeni Salev. So first he tells us about Chitzeni Salev, and then the Pnimi Salev. And he's referring to the Ahava, the love towards the Abishta. There is the love, the relationship with the Lev, with the heart towards God, which comes as a product of our own investment, meaning our intellectual investment through, he says, through our Bina and our Das, through our Seichel, to be able to have an appreciation and thus a love of the Abishta. And then there is what he refers to as Pnimi Let me just turn this off. Then is what he refers to as Pnimi And Pnimi is a level of love which is not something that's achievable through our own efforts, but rather it's something which is given to us in, innately. It's put into us together with our Neshama. It's something that we have, what we call the Pnimi The Nitzot, he refers to it as that spark. We refer to it last week as what's called the Pintelayid. That's something that every single person has. And why then don't we experience it? So he says the last line of the page of, of Kufa, he says the reason we don't experience it is because this level is in a state of golos. It's a state of exile, shivya, in captivity. This is what's referred to as the golos of the shechina. Not the, there's the all the general shechina and then there is the, so to speak, the mini shechina, the shechina symbolized by the neshama that's in the golos. This is the nitzutz, the spark that's in a golos within us, this, that our nefesh kiss is in a spark within, within us. And that is because he uses the expression of bovel, which means the bilbul, because of the confusion of the world around us, which confuses our priorities. And we get involved and excited and stimulated by things which are not necessarily holy, not, necessarily, not forbidden, but just all of the, the, the desires of this world. The taiva zeylam haza, he says. And this is what's referred to as the foreskin of the heart. And he brought Sorry, up... Rabbi Kipman. Sorry, I missed one week last week, so I, I'm a bit lost. Which page are we on? Oh, I say, all right. Okay, I'm just doing a review. We're going to be learning on page 210. 210, yeah? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, during the review, so you won't be lost. Okay. So, what was I saying? Yeah. So therefore, this primius alev, this nitzutz, this spark, this pintle, it doesn't express itself. 
Why is that? Because of this internal gallows that we experience as a result of our involvement and in all of the other things which are the distractions to our relationship with Abishna. And therefore he uses the metaphor, this is the meaning of the foreskin of the heart. And this is what it says in Pasuk in Pasha's Akev that Umaltem is Arlas So there's two Psukim in Chumish Dvarim. One says that you shall remove the foreskin of your heart. And the other Pasuk says that Hashem will remove the foreskin of your heart. So which one is it? So he explains that there's just as in the physical foreskin in this in the in the bris ceremony, there is the orla gasa, there is the thick foreskin, and then there's a membrane which has to be removed. Same thing spiritually or in our heart. There is the thick membrane, which is the gashmi is the tivis of Elam Haza that get in the way of our relationship with the Abishta. And then there is a thinner one, a membrane. The umaltimus or the slavavchem that what we have to remove the foreskin of our heart, meaning we have to remove those barriers which separate us from the Abishta. That's up to us to do. And that's what we do now, or we're meant to do now. Then the thin membrane, the or the klipadaka, as he refers to it, that already is going to happen when Mashiach comes. The Abishta then is going to umal Hashem as Arlas Lavavchem. Then Hashem is going to remove that. And that's referring to that. Yeah, and that's more or less what we did last week. So we're going to start on page, we're going to just go back a few lines today. We're going to start on page 210. Um, you see uh, two thirds of the way down, the end of the line, there's a dot. You can't miss it, right? Yeah, you see it. Okay. Hainu. The dot at the end of the line. No, Hainu. What Hainu? Someone said Hainu. No, it's me. 210. Uh, what? Yeah. The last word is Mamash and then a dot. Avrami, can I just ask a question? Yeah. Does it mean that nobody is, it's impossible to remove that? Even a big tzaddik, greatest person, could not possibly nobody could remove that um the thin a tzaddik doesn't have the the it doesn't have the problem uh-huh okay the tzaddik doesn't have okay. a barrier between him and the abishta right and uh, so hmm, any kind of tzaddik or oh uh, what you, what, kind of that you're asking the question based on the different types of tzaddikim that the Altareb explains in the first part of Tanya. So a tzaddik gomor, a complete tzaddik, as the Altareb says over there, which are very few, that they should have to yeah. pass them in every generation. So those are different types. Those are different. Those are gifts to the world. And over there's a very, yeah, it's a different. So we, we might not even know what who that person is. It's a different makeup. Yeah, yeah. something else it's completely. Not... Yeah. Yeah, it might it might be somebody like nobody would even know. That's not relevant. I mean, we there are those who we do know, and then there may be some others that we don't know. Usually, we yeah. do know. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So everyone's got the place there, yeah. Mama should then by the dot. So we're going to uh, just go back behind before that. Um, three lines, three lines before the dot. The third word in the line, Vov Ayn Zayn, you see it? Regarding this, it says in the time for, at the time, that at the times of Mashiach's coming, that Hashem will remove or circumcise the foreskin of the heart. So that that we should be able to then love Hashem with all of your heart, with all of your soul, for your life. So the Altar explains, because, ki Hashem mamash, because Hashem alone, exclusively, He is Kol Chayecha. He is your entire life. In order for one to sense and appreciate this reality, that the Ebesh is Chayecha, that there is nothing else, and He is your entire life, you need to remove that skin, that fine, even the finer, the, 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 um, Membrane. 
And that's going to happen when Mashiach comes, and then it will become a reality that the day which is your life. Okay. Shalachain, yeah, beginning of the line, after the dot. Shalachain avazu, imum kodelibo, therefore this level of love is from the very depths of the heart, min nekudo pnimis mamash, this is what's the, the innermost nekudo, the innermost point or spark within the heart. What we refer to as the pintele yid, a pintele means a nekudo, which means in English a dot. What we refer to as a, as a, as a dot, that period at the end of a sentence, right? So it doesn't really work in English, but it means the nekudo means it's the center point of everything. And it's therefore, it is not something that's achievable through our comprehension that we're able to have more or less of it depending on our intellectual capacity. No, because it's a lamayla of Chinas Hadas. It's beyond Das. It's beyond Seichel. And therefore, Velochein Moshiach Bob Behesach Hadas. The Alter Rebbe uses this as a play on words, so to speak. There's a Gemara that the Gemara says the Moshiach will come when we're not paying attention. In Hebrew, not paying attention means Hesach Hadas. Which literally means Hesach, removal of Das. Which means, which we, which is an expression used for not paying attention. But here the Alter Rebbe says, no, the words can be taken literally. That the Mashiach comes by Hesach Das means what's going to happen then is not going to be something which is going to be achievable through Das. It will be something higher than Das. Hesach Das. When there is no more Das. Das will be put to the side. We're going to have, we're going to experience a much greater level. Because what's going to happen then is going to be a gilui, a revelation of the pchina, of the level of this nekuda pnimis, this inner nekuda, this inner pintala haklolis, which is the all-encompassing level of love and connection to the Ebishter. And you see a shechina haklolis mahagolis. And therefore it's not just going to achieve a personal Yitzia, a personal exodus and redemption from Golos of our personal Shechina, of our Nefesh Elikis, but then will also be a Yitzia, an exodus of the Shechina HaKlolis, of the general, the big Shechina, the Ebesha Shechina from Golos. Meha Golos, Vehashivya in captivity. Lo'ad ulel me'ilamin. Forevermore. Shechen kol nitzutz So too, that's going to be with the general Shechina HaKlolis. And so too it will be with each individual level of Shechina. So to each individual spark from the Shechina, which is in within the Nefesh of every individual Jew, will also, when Mashiach will come, when it will be Hesach Adas, when it will be a relationship with the there higher than Das, when Das will be put to the side and will have a relationship to the there beyond Das, then each individual will also leave and exit the Golos of, and the captivity. Lefi. One second. Oh, okay. So now, so that's going to happen when Mashiach comes. It's going to be So the Alter Rebbe says that the same thing can happen now in a small way as well. That's what he's going to tell us now. So to every particular nitzutz, every particular spark of the shechina, which every one, every nefesh Yisrael has, can also, golos, can also emerge and leave the golos, v'ashivya, lefisha, temporarily. We can achieve that now. The big exit is going to be when Mashiach comes. But in a small way, we can do that now as well. How? In other words, what are we talking about here? To reveal this nitzutz, this spark, this pintala of love that we have to the Eibishter. We can do that now as well, says the Alter Rebbe. You don't have to wait for Mashiach to come. In a small way, we can do that now. Lefisha, temporarily. When? When we are involved in Chayesha. When we're involved in the moment of life. Zutfilo, that means davening, tfilo. Davening, we can experience, be it for a few moments. Lefisha, bechina, bechina shah, lefisha, as he says, temporarily. But we can experience then a bit of that love, which is not the love of the Abishta, which comes as a result of our comprehension, but rather a bit of the love which is there innate in every one of our neshamas. When? Bechai Yeshua Hello? 
Hello. Um, so we learned a while back about uh, a Bainan, that you can become like a Bainani in the same way during davening. So is this the, is this the same Indian again, exactly like that? Or and and another part of my question is <laughs> that when when it happens fully, does that mean there's no gashmias anymore, or does that just mean we? I, I don't understand how we can go above das and and have no. Have you ever read no okay. it? Okay, a simple example. <laughs> have you ever read a good book that you got so immersed in the book? that you uh, didn't realize time passing and you missed lunch. Yep. Okay. <laughs> oh, there I don't know go. about missing lunch, but I got it absorbed, yes. All right. So you asked, did Gashmias, you got so immersed in something that uh, the Gashmias, the material world around you became as if non-existent because you're so involved in this thing. So that's what he's telling us over here. That's what davening can be. That the one gets immersed in the trilla so well that is freed from the golos, is freed from the shivya, freed yaitzes of our golos with shivya lefisha. The nefesh is able to leave, to emerge from the golos, the exile and the shivya and the, and the, and the captivity lefisha for that while that the person is davening. That's so, right. I understand the temporary. That's, it. the that's, what, that's what he's saying. He's talking about temporary. Uh, he said, but I know, but, we, but he did say, when you did say when Mashiach comes, oh, we'll, we'll all be, be on it. Yeah, that's going to happen. They so does that, do that mean? So what is there no gashmi? We there? can experience a small amount of that in a small way, in a miniature way. We can experience it now as well. When temporarily during davening, yeah, like the bainini does, as you learned in the first part of Tanya, that you can be a bainini during davening, and then afterwards things go back to what we call normal. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. So you ask, does Gashmi is not there? Yeah, for that while that you detached yourself from the Gashmi, the Gashmi was no longer significant. So as he says, Lefi Shaw. So yet, so this can happen, Lefi Shaw, when Bechayesha, when one is involved in the Chayesha, in the momentary life, Zutfila. And this is during the time when a person is involved in the service of the heart, not just a shallow service of the heart, but rather, from the depths of the heart. When one is involved in the depths, in the umka, the imik, the deep, the depths of the heart, from the innermost point of the heart, which becomes niglis me'arla, which becomes freed or revealed. The arla, the foreskin, is no longer blocking it. The barrier that we have from Gashmias of this world, when a person is davening mu'umka deliba from the depths of the heart, then all the barriers of this world, which came to become the foreskin, are no longer there. And therefore, it releases itself from b'chinas nekudas me'arla, which is revealed from this, so to speak, foreskin of the heart. And then this nefesh, then the nefesh, the person with the nefesh is able to soar and rise upwards, to cleave dveikus, to cleave boy with him, with the evish, the bitchuka aza, with a strong and fierce yearning, in, in, in the level of, as it says in the Pasuk, for the sake of your life, laman chayecha. So that's what can be achieved during davening doesn't mean that it will be with us throughout their entire day, as you just mentioned, as you said. The Benini has it during times of davening. Later on, the battle begins again, returns. But you, there could be a few moments of time out, and that's when a person is able to release oneself and free oneself from this captivity of the body and the Nefesh Abamis and Elam Hazen and all the Taivas and all of these things which are creating this barrier, this Arlas Halev. And th therefore, he says, this time, when a person is involved in this type of davening, this, this temporary redemption of the nekuda, of the pinimius of the heart, during davening. This is what's called, this is also the level of hesach hadas, right? Top of the page. This is as we said earlier, the, the removal of the das of the person. So it's a personal redemption. Just as we said earlier, and he brought down from the Gemara that Mashiach comes behesach hadas, 
and he explained the deeper meaning of that Gemara. That means not just when you're not paying attention, which is the literal meaning, but rather when there's the Das is removed and it allows for the innate sent uh, a Nukuda love of the Abishta, the same thing can happen during Davening. That's the Pchinus Hesach Das of the Odom, of the person. Because this level of, of the nekuda, halev, the nitzutz, of the spark, that is the personal, the personal shechina of the person that we have, that suddenly becomes revealed for that time that a person connects, what we call, you know, today people call connect. With that time when a person is davening properly and, ha- and achieves that connection, that is something which is higher. It's higher than a person's das, and it's higher than his beninuse, higher than one's his beninus contemplation and meditation in the greatness of Hashem. You reach it by having a meditation, by contemplating the greatness of Hashem. But that will only get you to the avas Hashem, which you can achieve on your own steam. Then from that, you'll be able to remove that and be able to reveal the deeper love of the Ebeshta, which has nothing to do with our achievement, but rather that which is given to us from the Ebeshta. That is what's called the Hesach Adas. So what is it? It's not something that we can earn and achieve. It's a gift. Nesuna meis Hashem, which is given, granted to us from the Ebeshta, min Hashemayim, from heaven. From where mehaonas pchinas ponim el yenim, from the shining, the radiation of the level of the Abishta's ponim el yenim, his supernal ponim, his supernal countenance. And this is what we say, and this is the deep, again, the altar was giving us a the deeper understanding of so many common things that we're familiar with. This is the meaning, shekos of yoyr Hashem ponim elecho, right? In the pirches kenim. May God shine his countenance upon you. That's how it's, come, it's translated, right? What does that mean? <laughs> So countenance in English means countenance, whatever that means. But in Hebrew, ponov means more than just, ponov means pnimius, as we learned many times. So that Yod Hashem ponov elecha, that Hashem should illuminate and shine his pnimius upon you to reveal this pnimius, this internal deep spark, nekuda, all of the, 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 all the, all the, all the words that are synonymous for this deepest level of relationship with the Eivishter. So the bracha is that that should happen, which is the removal of the foreskin. Because of as it's written, that Hashem will remove the foreskin. And which one are we talking about? We're talking about this membrane, the much thinner one. The thick foreskin is something that we created ourselves, and therefore we have to be the ones to remove it. The thin one, the membrane, that's what the Eivishter does. In general terms, that will happen in, when Mashiach comes, when it will be Hesach Adas completely. And in a small way, it's something that we can each achieve in our daily davening, if we so choose. Through a davening with a dveikos to the Ebishter, from Umka de Libo, from the depths of the heart, that will allow for this primius halev to be able to come to the fore and to be revealed in our personal life. That's what, we're, that's what he basically said till now. Okay. Right? So five lines from the top, by the dot. Ah, however, so he's going to take it further now. We have a principle. Tell me if you're familiar with the terms, otherwise I'll give you an overview of it. This is, we learn it in, 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 uh, in Elul. We say, Anila Deidi Vidaidi Li. So we have, in Chesidus, they use the term, Yisarusa de la Tata, Yisarusa de la Eila. Which means that there is a isarusa. This is a, a terms from the Zohar in Aramaic. Isarusa would be in Hebrew his eilus, an awakening, an inspiration. So there's an isarusa de la eila. There's times when the Eibushter gives us an isarusa from above, and then there are times when there's an isarusa de la tata, an awakening and an inspiration from below. In other words, when we inspire ourselves, there are times when the Eibushter inspires us. So there are certain occasions when the inspiration is there. Shabbos, Yom Tiv. And then we rise to that occasion. And then there are times it's just a regular day and we have to inspire ourselves. So Chassidus explained, for example, Anila Day to Day Dili is the month of Elul. Elul is just a, it's a regular weekday, the Alter Rebbe says in that famous Mimer. It's a time when we have to self-inspire, generate our, the inspiration. That's Isarusa de la Tato. 
That's Anila Daily. And then comes Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, which is with Daily Lee, when the Amishter responds with in Eserusa de la Eila. All right? So this is in general terms, Eserusa de la Tata, Eserusa de la Eila. Sometimes this is in Eserusa de la Eila, and we respond with in Eserusa de la Tata. And sometimes we begin the relationship with Eserusa de la Tata, and then the Amishter gives us an Eserusa de la Eila. And the different occasions, the different, for example, the, the contrast uh, um, Tishrei with Nisan, the Alter Rebbe explains that Nisan, they should have took the Yidin out of Mitzrayim. They didn't do anything to earn it or to achieve it. They should have took them out of Mitzrayim. That was in Serusa de la Eila. And that generated the corresponding Yisirusa de la Tata throughout the days of counting the Omer till they arrived in Harsinai and said Nasa Nishma. That was already Yisirusa de la Tata, but it was a response to the Eivishter's Yisirusa de la Eila. As opposed to the month of Tishrei, Tishrei comes in response. Tishrei is a Serusa de la Eila, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, but that comes in response to our Serusa de la Tata in the month of Elam. Right, that's, what, that's an example of Serusa de la Tata, Serusa de la Eila. So the question, of course, is what came first? The chicken or the egg? Who, star, who makes the first move? In any relationship, somebody's got to make the first move. Who's going to ask who out in a shidduch? Is he going to call the girl? Or is the girl going to call the boy? Who's going to, is the, is the shopkeeper going to come up to you and say, can I help you? Would you like to buy something? Or are you, is there the, is the shop policy, wait for the customer to come and ask, how much is this? In every relationship, there is always one person, one side that has to make the first move. And the same thing is by the Eibishter. So who's going to make the first move? That's what he's going to be telling us an interesting thing over here. Yeah, can I ask a question? Sorry. So, you know, in the case of Mitzrayim, you said it was, you know, from above, but it says that Hashem said, oh, I heard, I heard the crying of the Ben Yisrael. Wasn't that from the Tata? Did it come from, from the Yidin? First I cried, and then Hashem heard the cry, and then he responded. Isn't that also like from below? Um, the, it, it's a very good point what you're saying, but we're talking here. So was it a crying of a spiritual gallus, or was it the, the crying from the physical suffering that they were having? They're different, you mean? It's it's it not exactly. Um, yeah, the, 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 uh, it, like I, I said, they didn't do anything to earn and achieve a, a geula. They should took them out of Mitzrayim not because they were beautiful people, but because they should have promised Avraham Avinu that he's going to do that. I thought that because they brought the carbon Pesach and they did Brismilla and... Oh, so that was at the end, they actually gave them two mitzvahs, yeah. So they earned it, they did it. Okay, then the Abishter, okay we're talking in general terms. The Bnei Yisrael were not serving the Abishter. In fact, they were even worshipping idols. Right? They weren't, in general terms, they weren't serving the Abishter that they deserved. In other words, their redemption wasn't because they had the merit and they earned it. Rather, the Eibishter did it. That's how the Alter Rebbe explains it. The difference between two, the Alter Rebbe explains between the difference between Anila Daidi with Daidi Li and a different Pasuk in Shira Shirim earlier that says Daidi Li Vanilai. So Anila Daidi with Daidi Li is, is Ani, is the, the Yidin first, and then Daidi Li. The other Pasuk is first Daidi Li and then Anilai, the exact opposite. So the Alter Rebbe explains the difference between these two Psukim is two different uh, occasions. One is when the Ebishter comes and schleps us out, and one is when we do something to generate and, 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 and create a relationship. So he says, Ach, my da, zeis. however, it's well known that what? Ki Isarusa de la Eila is be Isarusa de la Tata Dafka. Oh, so here the Altarim says there's a well known principle that even an Isarusa de la Eila needs an Isarusa de la Tata first. One of the whole discussions in the mind of Anila Daidi that the Rebbe explains is that if 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 it's a if if it's a if it's a Isarusa de la Tata, then it can't be any Isarusa de la Eila. Then Melech Basada, the famous example that the Alter Rebbe gives of King in the Field, is that not an Isarusa de la Eila? That's the greatest Isarusa de la Eila when you become aware that the Melech is Basada. So why is it Anila Daidi? It's really the Ebesh is coming out first, and then we are meant to go out to the Melech. That's one of the questions that the Rebbe asks. So again, which one came first? So in any case, over here, the Alter Rebbe is telling us is from the perspective that we're learning over here, he's telling us that the Isidusa de la Eila comes in response 
to Isarosa de la Tata Dafka. Only then. Okay. Yes, you'll have questions in other places. We're not getting into that now. But for, from the perspective that the Alta Rebbe is learning here, Isarosa de la Elo is a response to Isarosa de la Tata. In other words, the first needs to be who has to make the first move? Isarosa de la Tata has to come from us. And what is that? So he uses a term brought in Kabbalah that there is feminine waters and masculine waters. Mayim Nukvin and Mayim Duchrin. Bipchinas Ha'aloas Mayim Nukvin, which is an elevation of, of, of this, what's Mayim water, Nukvin, feminine, female. By awakening this feminine waters, I'll we'll explain to it in a minute. Um, um, by awakening these Mayim Nukvin that awakens with which is Mayim Duchrin. What that means is that the what, who's the who's the feminine, who's the female over here? The Eden. And the Eibush there is the male. And then he's saying that, again, I said to you earlier, who's going to make the first move in any relationship? So when we do mitzvahs, so Kabbalah has explained that when we learn to do mitzvahs, we are elevating whatever it is, the spirituality that we're elevating. And that's referred to as Mayim Nukvin. And then we elicit a response from the Eibush there, what's known as Mayim Duchrin, as the masculine waters. Okay, it's a it's a it's in Kalsen Zoya. Don't worry about that for now. But the point what he's telling us over here is that there has to start from us, and then the Ebishter responds. That's the level, that's the idea of Maim Halo, Halo's Maim Nukvin. And then, like with everything, there needs to be some textual support in Nigla, in the revealed part of Taylor, whether it's a verse, a Posak, or whether it's a Gemara or a Medrash. So he says, Razal. As the Gemara says, it's actually also a Zaya. Ain tipo yeredes milamailo, that no drop of rain descends from above without chulo, etc. Which, and it continues without two corresponding drops first coming up from below. Don't know what the Zaya is talking about over there. The point is that the one that has to make the first move is Isarusa de la Tata. That's the point that Dalton ever wants to bring across here. Don't worry and don't get confused by the Kabbalah of it. Okay. The point is, as he says right at the beginning, by these two dots, Ahmeda Zeis, Ki Sedusa de Laila is be Sedusa de la Tata. That's the way it works. You want to have any Sedusa de Laila, you want to have a revelation, you want the Amish to, 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 to do something, you got to do something first. That's what the Altar wants to tell us over here. Velochena, therefore, Sorich Ha'odom, Lasis Ba'atzmai, therefore, a person. A person is necessary that a person should do something. Last is ba'atzmai to perform to do something within oneself. Tchila first. We want to have. What are we trying to do over here? What are we trying to achieve over here? What did we learn till now? We're trying to achieve that the Ebrister should remove of the foreskin of our heart. You want the Ebrister to remove the foreskin of the heart, your heart. You got to start doing it first yourself. That's what he's saying. Therefore, the person has to first begin by performing this milo, this circumcision of the heart that we got to start doing on ourselves. And what does that mean? To remove the, so to speak, the so-called foreskin of the heart, and this thick klipa, and the daka, and the thin klipa. We got to do whatever we can to remove it. Because what are, why do we have to get rid of them? Because Hamalbisha is because they are clothing and covering Alpinas Nakudas Pinimis Alev over the this Pinimis of the Lev, the Nakuda of the Lev, the Nitzutz of the Lev that we've been talking about until now. They are the ones that are hampering and re- getting in the way of our Pintalayid to come out and reveal itself to be able to have a wholesome relationship with the Abishta. Why is it not happening? It's a very simple answer to that. The solution is not simple, but the answer is simple. The relationship with the Abishta is being hampered and is being hindered because of this barrier of the covering of the heart. It's not allowing my heart to be able to have a relationship with the Abishta because it's in the way. And therefore, who's going to get rid of it? I want the Abishta to do it. I want him to help me do it. I got to start doing it myself. Don't expect miracles. Don't expect the Amish to come and do it for you. That's what he's saying. Because, based on the principle, Isarusa de la Tata is what generates Isarusa de la Eila. And therefore, you got to try, says the Alter Rebbe, you try whatever you can to do this, you start the work, and then the Amish will come and help you. 
as we know the rule with everything. But not wait for him, let him start, and then I'll, carry, I'll help him. No, no, you start and he'll help you. That's the way it works. So again, if a person has to begin and start with oneself, this milo, which is to remove this foreskin of the heart and the klipa agasa the daka, the thick klipa and the daka, the thin klipa. Which clothe and conceal and cover this level of pnimius nekudas alev. Which is what? It's covering and concealing in practical English. What does it mean? It's covering over this love of Hashem. I don't feel it. I don't feel inspired. I don't feel the love. It's because there's something getting in the way and I'm not feeling the love. This is we're trying to achieve to reveal the, the level of Avas Hashem, which is not just a casual love, but a love of the Abishta to the point of Laman Chayecha that this that I realize that the love is so great because I realize that the Abishta is Chayecha. He is my life. There is nothing other than him. If I don't feel that love, it's because I'm suffering from this syndrome called Orla Salev. We all have it. She begolos This is because this the, the, the lave is in a golos in this world. Which which part of not through not from 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 enemies, not from foreign enemies, not from the Russian government or any of the other enemies of the Yidden over the ages, but rather from our own enemy called Tavis Elam Haza. From all of these desires for Elam Haza. And because I'm sunk and I'm allowing myself to live a life of pursuing and the ambitions are for Tavis Elam Haza, this is what conceals and covers and, clo- and clothes this Nitzutz, this spark, this Pnimius, this Nakuda, and therefore I'm not able to experience a proper Avas Hashem. Because I've allowed myself to become in a to, to fall into a golos for Tavis Elam Haza, that instead of Laman Chayecha should be the Abishta, he's my Chaim. The Tavis Elam Haza become Laman Chayecha. Shehim Gamkin, Bhinaz Laman Chayecha, that they, these physical desires, also become my Laman Chayecha. They become for the sake of my life. Instead of the Abishta being Laman Chayecha for the sake of my life, I've exchanged that for the Tavis of Elam Haza, which you become Laman Chayecha. Bazelu maze again for the third time in this chapter in this letter, Dr. uses this expression, Bazelu Maze. This opposite that, this corresponds to that. Instead of having a passionate relationship with the Abish, I'm having a passionate relationship with my Tavis Elam Hazan. Kanal is mentioned above. So I'm not able, it's impossible, in fact, to be dedicated to have a relationship with the Abish if I'm too busy with my relationship with myself, with my Desires and cravings of Elam Hazan. And yes, the Altarab is telling us that it's Zelu Umazet. That means depending which way it's going to swing. If you, the more I'm going to be, you know, it's like a scale. The more I'm going to be involved in my personal time, is the less I'm going to be able to be involved in, what they, in, in love and relationship with Abishta. So people look for a quick fix. So we go and there's a kumzitz and there's a head and a hin, you know, a nice song and everything. I felt inspired. I went to shul once a year. I went to Yom Kippur as an inspiring sermon. Everyone at their, at their level. One common denominator everyone has is we're all looking for an easy fix. It's not going to happen. We're not going to fix this problem by a good sermon or a good whatever. This requires personal Aveda, something that Chabad demands, and Chassidus Chabad is so much referred to as this personal Aveda. Here, Dal Tareb is referring to it in the terms of Isarusa Dilatata. And this is something we're just coming up to Yud Shvat next week. This is something that the Rebbe said right then at the beginning of the first Fabrengan of Yud Shvat, after the Maimer of Bosi Legani. The Rebbe said, he, made the, he, he, he said it very clearly. He says, don't think that you hired a son-in-law and I'm going to take care of everything for you. Every single one of us is going to have to go and deal with our own sitra with our own um, uh, negativity and our own tavis elam And we're going to have to, I'll help, he says. He said, and he says, I don't, I'm not saying I'm not going to help you. But it, everyone has to 
pick our socks up and we got to do it ourselves. Not just within, he says, not just individually, but in order to transform the whole world, the shtus the, the, of the whole world into a shtus de kedusha, which is the theme of Basil Lagani. So it's not going to come by a quick fix and a nice uh, heartwarming, uh, soul tingling experience, but rather it's out there in the trenches, as they say, each one of us, we have to do this Aveda. And here he's telling us, clear, Isalusa de la Tata will bring to the Isalusa de la Eila. We have to work to remove this foreskin of the heart. How do we do that? So here, the Alter Rebbe comes to the original theme of this letter, which, as I told you the, the last time, the theme of the, most of the letters in the Genesis HaKedesh is about Tzedakah. And the Alter Rebbe explains the mitzvah of Tzedakah from many different angles. And here, the Alter Rebbe is going to therefore say, how do we do this? How, what's the most efficient way of breaking our addiction and enslavement to Tavis of Elam Haza? He says, you got to deal with it head on. How are we going to remove this barrier, this foreskin of the heart by giving Tzedakah Tzedakah is always to God from one's money. You can learn Mima money from one's own money or from Hashem's money. Depends how you look at the money. Is it mine or is it Hashem's money? But the simple interpretation of what the Rebbe is saying over here is the citizens has talked Hashem Mima money from his money, from the from the person's money, from one's own money. Why? Why is it that what giving from one's own money is the way of breaking this Orla Salev, this clipper, this barrier of the heart? Because what do we say? Said over here specifically, the Alter Rebbe said that we've exchanged Laman Chayech of the Eibush to Laman Chayech of my own personal life. Therefore, he says that's why it's relevant. It's, it's, it's connected to money, because money is my life. Why? Shehu Chayusei, because money is a person's chayus. The Alter Rebbe said earlier in Tanya that with money you can buy food, and food becomes Damal Bosar Kipsora. He said it becomes your own flesh and blood. It becomes a part and parcel of your very body, of your very being. So when one is giving away money, it's as if you're giving away your own physical flesh and blood, because you could have used this for yourself. So should what's we if you're so? very poor? Sorry. What if you're really, really very poor and He's you don't get have to that money now. to give away? He's going to get to that now. Ubifrat, Mishim is a nice mitzvah tzamim. And especially somebody whose mizenis, whose income is very limited. And he's very hard pressed at the time. He's very pushed. It's a, it, 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 the time is a very difficult time. He's going through a financial crisis. He has a limited income and he's hard pressed. So when that person is giving tzedakah, then it's not just a metaphor that that person is giving away what could have been used for his own life-sustaining energy, but it's actually literally giving away. When that person gives tzedakah, then he's actually giving away from his own life. That answers your question. Someone who's very poor, and when he's giving tzedakah, he's actually, it's, it's, it's even more of chayecha of that he's giving away than a person who has more uh, disposable income. So money in general can be used for my own life, but I'm going to give it to Tzedakah. The person who has very little money, so he's actually having to take food out of his own mouth and he's going to have to eat less. So then it's even more so Chayecha. Again, what's the, what we're trying to achieve over here? To exchange the Laman Chayecha of my life to the Laman Chayecha of the Eibishter. So therefore, even someone who's very poor, and when he gives Tzedakah, it's even more Laman Chayecha. Then he goes another example, another scenario. Ube Pratos, and more specific, this is especially so if it's a person who earns his money, if a person who supports himself by Yigia Kapov, by the toil of his hands. As opposed to that he has money by whatever other means. But rather, he's a day worker, he goes to work, he got he to schlep, he got to build, he got to work with his hands. What's that? What's unique about that? She Evsha, it's not possible. It's not person, it's not possible for a person who 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 works by the toil of his hands many times that he didn't get he didn't involve. 
it's not possible for a person who's working intensely with the actually the physical body is involved in the work. It's not possible that he didn't do that where he invested his, his primus alive as well. In other words, it's not possible to work with the toil of your hands in a shallow, detached way. If a person is 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 working to earn a living physically, then he's he throws himself into it. That's what he's saying. Kimina ga'ilam. As is the way of the world, as is the way of the world, came in their business, in, 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 in buying and selling. And similar. They get so they get very involved in what the work that they're doing. When he says over here, working Yigiya Kappa with the toil of his hands, it means someone who's working, whether it's toil of his hands sitting behind a computer. Or actually schlepping and delivering and buying and selling behind the, the behind the till in the shop. The point is that this person is putting his life into it. He needs to earn a living. And when one puts one's life into it, one becomes digressed from, from the Abishnah. So that becomes Laman Chayecha. One, so to speak, becomes swallowed up by the pursuit of earning a living, which is nothing wrong with that. But the problem is that one gets swallowed up by it, and that becomes the Laman Chayecha, that becomes one's whole life. And here we're saying we're trying to achieve to switch it, that the Laman Chayecha should be for the Eibishter. So therefore he says, that's by giving tzedakah, because that's one's own Chaim, especially someone who has very little money disposable income to be able to give tzedakah, so he's even more so giving of his own Chaim. Even more, especially someone who works hard to earn a living, which it is inevitable. That's the word I was looking for. It's inevitable for such a person that the person did not invest one's primius alev into this, one the depths of one heart into earning a living. And now, upon at this occasion, when he's dispersing money from his hard effort. From his hard-earned money, he's giving, not just giving, Dalton abuse with Mefazer, he's dispersing. Despite his circumstances, and he gives it stocker to the Abish, the with joy, with a good heart, with a gladness of heart. Oh, Through this, with this, he's paid he redeems his nefesh from Shachas, from borrowing an expression from Tanakh from the pit. This is how we do it. Because the nefesh that's being concealed, the nefesh here he's talking about, the nitzot, the pnimias, the nakuda that we're talking about, when it's covered and concealed by the orla salev, it's falling into this metaphoric pit. How our goal over here is to how do we remove it? How do we redeem it? Pidyon, how do we redeem it? Through giving tzedakah. How does tzedakah do that? So the Alter Rebbe just explained to us the mechanics. That for starters, when you give tzedakah, you're giving money that could be used to buy yourself a nice food which that food could become your energy. Especially if you don't have much money. So it certainly would have been your energy. And how did you earn this money? By someone who worked hard. Not someone who got a, a windfall. But someone who worked very hard. And it's inevitable for someone who works hard that they're going to put their life into this. Into They're going to put their soul into it. They're going to put their heart into what they're working. And then when you take from that money that was earned, after you invested so much of yourself into that, and you disperse that to tzedakah, that, and you do it with joy. That is what's going to redeem the nefesh, pay the nafsh mishachas. That's what's going to redeem the nefesh from shachas from the pit. So, as he, and he spells that out. What does that mean? The high nebuchinas nekudas pinimis to redeem this nekuda, this pinimis of the heart. She, and what, where is it now? She, shoyse nebuchinas golos v'shivya, because this nekuda, the pinimis of the heart, is in a golos and is in a shivya, is in, is held captive, besecha klipa gasa daka, in, within the klipa, whether it's the klipa gasa or if it's the klipa daka, but the nefesh, the nekuda, the nitzut is there, it's in golos. That's what we're out to, that's what we are out to redeem, to remove, to be paid from the shachas from the pit. Because it's written in Mishle, Mikol Mishma Nitzayin Lipcha. So, the whole Pasuk reads, Pasuk Chav Gimel here, Mikol Mishma Nitzayin Libecha, Ki Mimenu Teitzayin Chaim. Which, translated in the regular translation, um, more than you guard anything, safeguard your heart. For, for, for from it are the source of life. 
So the Alter Rebbe says over here, Koshe Kosov. I lost the place. Oh, Koshe Kosov, we call Mishmar, Nitzar Libcha. From every Mishmar, you shall guard your heart. So the literal meaning is with great vigilance. But what does it mean with every Mishmar? Mishmar says the Alter Rebbe, Mishmar Pirush, Beis Hasurim. Prison. Guard your heart from prison. What does that mean? The prison that we're talking about over here. That our heart is in a jail. It's in a prison. It's not able to express its love for the Eivishta. The Pnimi Salev is covered over by the Orla Salev. The, the Orla Gasa, the Orla Daka, the thick husk, the thick barrier, the thin barrier, the membrane, whatever you want to call it. The, 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 the lave is in a, in a, in a Mishmar, in a prison. So the Al Rebbe interprets this positive. We call Mishma, you always do whatever you can to protect Nitzar Libcha, protect your heart from falling into prison. And today, the Al Rebbe says, the Ata Nivde Machitzeinim. How do we redeem and, and release the heart from the Chitzeinim, these external forces of evil? Bitzdok Azu with this Tzdok. In other words, we talk as with stock as we have today. Remember, we did it again as a tshuva, and also the Alter Rebbe said in the Perik Lamed or Lamed Aleph, I think it was, that it used to be that they used to fast, right? But we, but we don't, fasting is no longer recommended. In fact, the Alter Rebbe says it's forbidden today. And therefore, remember, we said what, what replaces fasting? Tzedakah. So in again as a tshuva, we learned that fasting, that tzedakah replaces fasting because that replaces uh, the carbon, right? There was no carbon, so then they fasted. We can't fast, so we do tzedakah. Here, the Alter Rebbe is approaching the, the idea of tzedakah from a different angle. Not that tzedakah is replacing fasting, but that tzedakah is going to be that therapy to redeem and release the Pnimi Salev from the, the, the Orla Salev. So, we have to protect the, 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 the heart from prison, from this Beis HaSurim, and that's done through tzedakah. For the reasons that he just explained to us. And therefore, now the Alter Rebbe is going to show us how this fits in with the actual words. Now, we learned last week, the Alter Rebbe brought earlier on that in page 210, he said that in the process of a physical bris milah, there's two stages. There's milah and there's priya. There's removing of the foreskin. And then there is, priya means parting the membrane. So he says the word priya itself can mean to part, as in the physical bris milah. But in the Hebrew, like we said, the, 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 the words that translate all have, they have more than one translation. He says, This is also the expression of priya, which means Indian priyas chayv, which can also suggest the idea of priyas chayv means repaying a debt or removing a debt. What do you mean? The person has become indebted to the chitzaynim, to these external forces, to one's tivis of Elam Hazar. Shemosh Luboy, and they became, when you become indebted to somebody, then they become your, they dominate you, the debts or the debtors. Mosh Luboy, on the Kudus Pnimis Liboy. This person, this individual, has become indebted and therefore subjected to the forces of evil, the chitzaynim. Who now rule Moshla Libai, which now rule over the this Nikuda, this Pneumius of the heart. Because the person has allowed himself to become indebted to them and therefore to become dominated by them. So the person is actually, we're in prison. We're talking about the person. We're talking about you and me. I have become a prisoner. I allowed myself to become a prisoner. And once I'm a prisoner, I'm no longer free. You know, originally after the Russian Revolution, when they overthrew the Tsar, so there was elections, and they voted, and then the ones who they voted became the communist leaders, and then they became a prison for seventy years. But originally, it was by their choice, they bought into it, and they chose whoever it was, and then that became the communist leadership, and that was the last time they had a choice. And that's what he's saying over here: we allowed ourselves into this. Exile into this golos of the lave through our tivus alev, and then that we became indebted to it, and then they became the dominating force in our lives, and we need we are now captives, 
Hence, we go back to the Pasuk that the Alta Rebbe said at the very beginning of this letter, And therefore, this is the deeper understanding of but the captives will be redeemed how? Through Tzedakah, because the captives is us. Those who are captive to the Chitzenim, to the other sides, to the Tivus of this world, and we don't or find it difficult to, to free ourselves from it. So the Alter Rebbe says, to free yourself from it has to be, has to come from you, and specifically how? Through Tzedakah. Now he's coming to answer, up the, que- answer the questions which he asked in the beginning. So this is the meaning of the Shavar Tzedakah. Now he goes back to the second line. This is the, the Pasuk he told us, Tzedek Yifan of Yehalech. And we asked the question, it should have said Yehalech, right? Tzedek Lefan of, this is the Vizel, Tzedek Yifan Lefan of Yehalech. Now we can understand what it means that tzedek, righteousness, but here he's going to tell us it means tzedakah shall go before him. It should have said yelech, he said, yehalech means will cause something else to go. So the Alter Rebbe says, lefanov, what does it mean? So let's reinterpret the Pasuk. Tzedek means tzedakah. Lefanov doesn't mean before the person who's giving, but lefanov means that tzedakah will go, lefanov means meloshin pinimius. It shares the root as the word pinimius. So the tzedek is going to go and impact the pinimius of the person, the nekudas halev, which is suffering from this, from this problem of orla salev. So the tzedakah is what's going to be able to penetrate the pinimius of the person, the father of the pinimius, and then v'yehalech will cause to go, who meloshen haylocha leads, meaning that tzedakah doesn't go there, but rather it leads the premiers of the person to the right place. That's the new interpretation of this Pasuk now. Tzedek, lefon of Yahalech, Tzedek, righteousness will go before the person. That's the simple meaning. And when he's telling you, Tzedek is Tzedakah. Lefon of to the premiers of the person, Yahalech, it will take that premiers to the proper direction where it's meant to be. Where should the premiers of my heart be? Not that my passion should be to Tavis Elam Hazer, but rather that my passion should be towards the Ebishta. That's the Pinimis Alev he's talking about over here. Shemelech is Pinimis Alev Lashem, as he says, because the Tzedakah is what's going to lead the Pinimis of the Lev, the innermost part of the heart, Lashem, to God. And then, as the, as the Pasa continues, then it says, Lederach Hashem Pa'omov. Then towards Hashem will be palm of one's steps. So now we have a whole new meaning of this pasuk in capital Pei Hei. As it's as it's written, that there's a mitzvah that Torah says, we should go in the ways of Hashem. Or another pasuk after the ways of Hashem you shall go. How? Bechol ma'isa mitzvus with all the with the study all the the deeds of mitzvus with Talmud Torah can get kulam and the learning of Torah, which is equivalent to them all. Shekulon he'elin la'Hashem ad epinimis alev. All of them ascend and rise higher to the Ebishta through the pinimis of the lev. Okay, we'll leave it at there today because we're not going to be able to finish it anyway. Um, so we'll finish it next week and then we'll start another one. Any questions? Sure, thank you.